Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. It's time for service. And we all be on our feet as we begin to magnify the name of the Lord. Let's exalt his name. The Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Elohim. Worship him. Exalt his holy name. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, we worship and exalt your name for another day, another opportunity to gather under you. Lord, we worship and exalt you. We thank you for bringing us together again. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We worship and exalt you. I can't hear us pray.
yourself for all that you've done for us, oh God. Thank you for how far you've taken us, oh God. We exalt you, Holy Jesus. Lord, we give you praise, oh God. We worship your holy name, Jesus. Let us begin to invite the presence of the Lord in our midst of spirit. He's already here. Let us say thank you, Jesus. Do what only you know how to do. Bless in our lives this evening, oh Lord. Come show yourself strong in our presence today, oh God. In the last time, I'll be Lord, we give you praise, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your name is exalted.
give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we worship. The Lord bless you, the Lord increase you, mighty in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Sunday. 
was in Sunday. Yeah, it was not Sunday, it was not Sunday. Anybody else? See me who finished all the all the, the this thing though. Know. Anybody else? What did you take out? Anybody be able to say I took out something out of my uh, recipe? Oh my God! I can give you a strong talk. Right? Oh, I, 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 I just have to hold you right now. Just have to hold you right now. See? Good one. Because if you say you have the faith and you are not taking action, your faith is zero. Okay? Yes. Uh, the faith you. is the audacious believing in God. Audacious believing in God. So please, you know you have two, three times two. Okay? I know your name is. Uh, um, uh, uh, Brother Baji, yes. Um, evidence of things, no, not seen. Evidence of things, not seen. And we, is that how it is? Substance of things, not seen. And evidence of things, you're right. Evidence of things, substance of things, not seen. Evidence of things, Hebrews 11 uh, 1. Give uh, IBK half. Who else is raising their hand? Yes, Michelle, don't be positive. I love Jesus. Jesus. I love Jesus. <laughs> yes, you love Jesus, but that was not last Wednesday. Who else is saying anything about last Wednesday? Who else is saying anything about last Wednesday? Okay. Yes. Faith is in hearing and doing. Faith is in hearing. Faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God. And after hearing to do, James chapter 1, uh, start from verse 22. So, keep Mr. Bayo to, yes, no, no, no. Anybody else have anything else to say? Can you remember any of the scenarios we talked about, or the um, examples we gave when we talked about faith in action? Abraham. What about Abraham? Which of them? He said God sent Abraham to go to the country that he had never been to. At least two, and yes, so. Yes, um, Joy. Joy Girl. Sorry. <laughs> yes, Kingsley. We also talked about um, the scenario where God asked Abraham to kill his only son for sacrifice. And um, Abraham believed that even though there was no ram, God was going to pro provide a ram. Okay, Kingsley. Yeah. Yes. In Abraham and Sarah's situation, Medically, he said God reversed the, I mean, recalled the womb. I don't know what he used. Like, there was a recall of the, after that entered menopause, there was a recall of the menstrual cycle so that you conceive. Yeah, menopause stop, exactly. I know that's a past menopause to menopause stop. My name was going to be this. This time's two. My name was going to be this. Okay, of oh, the physical levels we deal with logic, so by spiritual we deal with faith. Yeah, yeah so, I said that as well. And yeah, the physical realm, it's logic. Yeah, seeing is believing. But the spiritual realm is believing, the seeing. Okay? Going, 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 going. All right. I just looked at you, I said, let me look at you, let me look Praise the Lord. All right, we'll continue and um, we'll repeat some of the things we said last Wednesday, but just taking a few more examples. And for purpose of text, Hebrews 11 1. Father, we thank you. We ask God that you breathe upon this world. Let the Rema that is in the world, the life, the life, the Zoe, the life that is in the world, come alive to impact us. And not just that we listen, read, but more importantly, is that we take action and we are hearers and the doers of the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, IBK, you want to read Hebrews 11? Can you project this out? People can read that. She, she was all that. Quoted it for us. Hebrews 11, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Okay. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
Let me read a couple of translations. CEB, faith makes us sure of what we hope for and gives us proof of what we cannot see. Faith makes us sure of what we hope for and gives us proof of what we cannot see. NLT says that faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. So it brings to reality the fact, in fact, um, I, I can't remember whether it was here I said this or somewhere. I said that when you say you believe in Jesus and you've not seen Jesus, for us to know that we're believers, the reality of Jesus should be much more real than the physical person we're seeing. That's when we begin to understand the intimacy of Jesus. I was talking, okay, I, I remember it was not here. I was talking about the intimacy of our relationship with Jesus. Jesus should be more real to you than the physical person you are seeing. Should, we should get to that level, we should develop that level of intimacy that you are in tune, you are so into Jesus that you are like, you can tell when he's breathing, when he's sleeping, when he's, you know, what you, what you would be able to tell of the physical person, you can you should be able to tell the people of Jesus much more than the physical person. Praise the Lord. That's the depth to which we go. So faith is the reality of what we hope for. Gospel transition says that faith assures us of things we expect and convinces us of the existence of things we cannot see. So faith convinces us that what we can't see exists. So that job you cannot see exists. That children you cannot see in a physical eye exists. That money or resource that you cannot see exists. So that is what faith does. Faith convinces us of the existence of things we cannot see. And of course, trust uh, message transition. The foundational fact of existence is that this trust is in God. This faith is the firm foundation underlining everything that makes life worth living. The foundational fact of existence is that this trust is in God. This faith we're talking about is the firm foundation that underlines everything that makes life worth living. Like we said last Wednesday, when we say faith, faith goes to the core of the Christian of Christianity. Take away faith out of Christianity, it falls like a pack of cards. Because everything, everything, everything about Christianity is all about faith. And that's why the person that does not walk in faith or the person that does not understand Christianity cannot understand or cannot explain you. How can you be saying that it is well, it is well, and you are quote and unquote, you are shaking on your bed? How can you say it is well, it is well, and then they are packing your load? The landlord is packing your load out of the house. How can you say it is well, it is well, and then you cannot be, you know, you, they, they cannot be consulted. Because the man, the natural man, is operating in the natural logical sense. So it is not possible, quote unquote, for it to be well when you are shaking like this, you are shaking up malaria. How are you feeling now? It is well. Ah, or that, ah, there's no logic or there's no correlation to it. But you are speaking faith because the Bible says that we also have the same spirit. We believe, therefore, we what? Spoken. So, that you, the natural man cannot understand it. Does it make sense to the natural man or the man who tries to operate in logic? Because everything about Christianity is inched on faith. That's why this message transition says that it is the found, it is the fair foundation under that sorry, it is the fair foundation under everything that makes life worth living. That makes life worth living. So we operate by faith and not by sight. Praise the Lord. Okay, so going to the outline. We started this series last week. We defined faith and also talked about how to grow our faith as believers. Oh, we didn't we didn't say some of those things. Yeah. We talked about how to grow our faith. We said a few things. Can anybody remember? Yes, Kingsley. By the word of God. By studying and understanding. Studying the word of God. We said that. So, being a wordite, go for the word. Yes. Being challenged by testimonies of others. Taking action. Acting on what you read through. The testimony of others. But the first one is to be born again. To be born again. Yes, 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 remember that. So you have to be born again, otherwise it don't make sense to you. So you're born again, and then 
you read the word, you read the word, you study the word, meditate on the word, act on the word, be challenged by the faith of others and by the testimony of others and all of that. So we we con we will continue uh, the study of faith to gain more understanding on all this on this all important aspect of our Christian world. Three points I'm going to make today. The third point is a, a repeat of last Wednesday, but we'll look at more examples. The first point is that faith is believing in the efficacy and the potency of God's word. Faith is believing in the efficacy and potency of God's word. Luke chapter 7, 7 to 9. Luke chapter 7, 7 to 9. So faith is believing in the efficacy and potency of God's word. Luke 7, 7 to 9. Wherefore, neither told I myself what it to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Say just one word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus had these things, he marveled at him, and turned about, and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. I have not found so great faith. What did the centurion do? The centurion said, Only speak the word. For I have come to realize that there is enough power in the world. I have come to understand that your world is equivalent to you. I have come to understand that you have highly exalted your word above your name. I have come to understand that forever, O oh God, thy word is sent to in heaven. I have come to understand that the entrance of your word gives like it gives understanding unto the same. I have come to understand that your word is like a rock that breaks the is like a, a, a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. I come to understand that this your word is as powerful as your very presence. So, we need to get to that point where we would believe in the efficacy and the potency of God's word. The word of God. This Bible. So, faith is taking this Bible on its faith value. Just as it is. No question. No um, no no uh, Second, 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 second guessing. No, just what does the Bible say? This is what it says. That's faith. Not thinking twice. Not reasoning it. Not trying to, you know. I don't know whether you guys have seen. Uh, is, what, is it usually what they call it? I don't know. There's one book that has some funny, funny books. How many of you have seen you know, the, 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 the 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 book of Moses and some funny, funny, whatever? Now, this is what we have in the Genesis to Revelation. This word of God is complete and I am satisfied. I am okay with it. I don't want any additions. I don't want no subtractions. That's just taking the word of God for what it is. That's what the word of God. And then believing that what the word of God says it will do, or it can do, it will do. In this place we just read, the centurion was convinced that the spoken word of Jesus is as powerful as his physical presence. This centurion must probably have come across scriptures just, just, just like Jeremiah 23 29. For this centurion and his challenging us, Oko and Nigel. Is is it must have come across Jeremiah 23 29 that says what? Is not my world like as a fire, said the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. So the Bible says that this world is fire, this world is armor. So therefore, I understand therefore that anytime this word of God is applied to a situation, it can burn it. So I understand that anytime this word of God is applied to a situation, it can break it. That's all I need to know. And I will act and work in it. 
that this word of God is fire that can burn things, is armor that can break. Do you have a difficult boss, a very hardened boss, or somebody you have to deal with, and his heart is as hard as stone? Can you send the word to that heart? And just rest on the fact that that word will break his heart. Can you send the word of God to that situation and believe that the word of God will scatter whatever that God that anybody has against you? That's it. That the word of God is enough, nothing else. Exodus 14 14, it says that for the Lord will fight your battle, and the only weapon you need to hold is peace, and thou shalt hold your peace. Can you believe that God will fight my battle and I will hold my peace? So that's what the word of God is. is I mean, that's what faith is. Faith is believing in the efficacy and the potency. The word of God is powerful. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. This is a children. Must have come across Isaiah chapter 55. And verse 11, verse 10 and 11 actually, that says, For, the, for as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not eager, but water it off, and make it bring forth and board, that it may give seed to the soil, and bread to the earth. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. This word that goes out of my mouth shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing wherein I have sent it. So God says that this is my word. So if the word of God has gone forth that you are the head and not the tail, you are above and not beneath. If the word of God has gone out to say that as many as serve me, it, it will take sickness away. No, we bury no occasion. If the word of God has gone out to say that, I will lend, I will not borrow. If the word of God has gone, to, has gone out to say that, by stripes I mean, whatever the word of God is, says that it must not return unto him void. Can we believe that? That's faith. I believe it, and that settles it. That's faith. So faith is believing in the efficacy and the potency of God's word. That what the word of God is. So if I'm sick in my body and I come across the scripture that says that by his stripes I am healed. In First Peter chapter 2, actually says that you were healed, speaking in past tense. Can I believe that? Just rest on that word and claim my healing. The centurion must have come across Hebrews chapter 4 and verse. 12. The sage, for this word of God is sweet and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing able to divide the sound of soul and spirit and the joints and marrows. And this word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the eyes. This word of God is sharper than any two edged sword, it can penetrate. The hardest of hearts. Perhaps this centurion has come across John chapter 6 and verse 3. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Faith then says that the word of God. And I remember I was using that illustration combining Isaiah 55 and verse 11. It says that uh, the word was accomplished what they are saying. That the word of God does not get tired. The word of God does not lose steam on the way. The word of God does not diminish in power as it goes along. So that is why you can be here in Nigeria. I can pray for somebody who is in New Zealand, Australia, by faith, and that person responds to that prayer of faith. Why? Because between Nigeria and New Zealand, I don't know the distance, when the word of God goes forth, the potency, how powerful it is when you send it to Nigeria, is how it will go till it gets to New Zealand to go and achieve that purpose. 
start to have because it is spirit, it is life. The, the, the spirit and life behind the world does not diminish because of these things. And I don't know how many of us watch, you know, uh, 700 Club. In 700, 700 Club. How many of us just, oh, we're all, we don't have any news to go here. There's this, uh, the, the, the presenter, he operates in the world of, world of knowledge, and the world of wisdom, world of knowledge, world of knowledge in particular. They'll have letters, plenty letters that people are meeting that they will just stay by the, the, the TV. And as he starts to pray, we begin to operate in the world of knowledge and say there's somebody here saying, da, 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 da. miles and miles, thousands of miles away. The following uh, uh, edition, you see him reading testimonies. That man of God, you know, last Wednesday that you gave this word and so that so and the one describing so you know accurately and giving the word. God tells the Lord that you God tells the Lord the same thing like that. That's the efficacy of the word. And so faith is hanging in there and holding on to that word. So if the word of God is powerful for that much of distance, how much more now you see our uh, distance uh, just right here in front of me, hearing the word of God. Can faith be stirred up in your heart? Can faith be stirred up in your heart to believe that this word of God is what it is, the word of God? And it is what? Efficacious and it is potent. Potent means that it is, it has, it is later in its effect. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We must take the word of God on its faith value and believe exactly what it says. This releases faith in us. We must just believe the word of God for this. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. I love the way it is said in some translations. Let's read KJV then. Um, First Thessalonians 2 13, is it? KJV says, For this cause also we thank God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God, which you heard, you receive it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth. The word of God, which effectually worked also in you that do what? Until you take the word of God for what it is and believe it will not work in you. Let's look at some translations. See, he says, We also thank God that you believe the message we preached. It came from Him and it isn't something made up by human hands. You accepted it as God's word and now it's working in you. NLT. Therefore, we, th we never stop thanking God that when you received this message from us, you didn't think of our words as mere, as mere human words. You accepted what is said as the very word of God, which of course it is. And this word continues to work in you. You accepted it as... When we, when we preached to you, when we gave you the word of God, you accepted it as the word of God. It was not the word of men. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amplify it. And we also thank God continually for this, that when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcome it not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is, the word of God, which is effectually at work in you who believe, exciting his ancient supernatural power in those who faith. Praise the Lord. So the word of God, we have to accept it for what it is, on the faith value that it's the word of God. Praise the Lord. We must take the word of God on his faith value and believe exactly what it is. Don't ask questions, don't expect more, don't expect less. If God says that by his stripes you are healed, you are healed. Full stop. If the word of God says that you are born and not believe, if the word of God says that you let you not borrow, whatever the word of God says about you, believe it and just accept it for what it is. That is faith. Praise the Lord. So faith is believing in the efficacy and potency of God's word. Very closely related to that, and almost like an extension, is now, secondly, faith is taking God at his word. What's the difference between the first and the second? The first is that I take this word as it is, right? Now, the second is a step further. The promise of God to you, what has God said to you, which may not, may, of course, it takes its root in in the Bible, there's nothing God will say either by prophecy or whatever that is written on the word. Now, what promise of God has come to you? What prophecy have you received? 
even you when you are praying, what did God speak into your heart? Faith is doing what? Is taking that word as God's word and acting on it. Luke 5 5. And Simon answering, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and we have taken nothing. Master, I have a PhD in fishery. You don't fish or you don't get the big fishes during the day. You get it at night when it's dark. You don't get the big fish at the uh, what do you call it? shallow end of the river. You get it at deep end. And for your information, we have tried all of this, but it did not work. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Nevertheless, I have faith that this that you have said will produce the result which I have not, have not got it before. So, you take God's word for what he has said. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down that faith. Because it's, it's logic, it's brain. Was telling him that son of man, you can't catch fish at this time, you can't catch fish at this place. That is with logic to you. That is his profession. That is his um, doctor's report. That is his expert opinion. But faith says that yes, despite the medical report, despite the expert opinion, despite the economic whatever, despite all of these things, faith says that God says it. I believe it. That settles it. That's faith. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And of course, the rest they say. John chapter 2 and verse 5. John 2 5. His mother said unto his servants, Whatsoever is said unto you, please, I beg you. Just do it. Because the word that this man will speak will produce your desired results. So, whatsoever is said for you to do, just do. And faith is just taking God at His word. And that takes me to that song. Be so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take Him at his word just to rest upon his promise and to know to says the Lord it is so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know God saves the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him all over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, who for grace to trust Him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his blessing, Lord, and his simple faith to glory, with the healing blessing flow. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him forever. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, over Yes, it's sweet to trust in Jesus Just from sin and self to cease Just from Jesus simply taking Life and rest and joy and peace Jesus, Jesus, how I love you How I prove you for and Jesus, Jesus Take him as his word. To take him as his word. 
just to rest upon his promise and to know thus say the, once you hear thus say the Lord rest on that promise once we hear thus say the Lord and you, it, you confirm it to your spirit man you, you, you agree with your spirit man just rest on that promise G T B go to bed So the book of Hebrew, chapter 11, can be referred to as the as a faith chapter. No matter whom the writer of Hebrews was talking about, each person had simply taken God at his word and obeyed his commandment. Even some hard instructions. And they were remembered for their faith. Hebrews chapter 11, in Hebrews chapter 11, God told Noah to build an ark because there was going to be a massive flood. Remember we said the last last Wednesday, Noah was a, was, wasn't a builder or an engineer. Rain had never fallen before, but Noah took God's word as it was. God said, go and build an ark because there's going to be rain. Noah did not reason. Noah did not ask questions. Noah did not challenge God. Noah did not say, God, you need to define what flood is. You need to define what rain is. You need to explain to me the, the mechanics around how I will build this big ark that Rain is going to lift up. That's just taking God at his word. God told Abraham to go out to a place that he would receive as an inheritance. He had never left his people before. His siblings were no more. His father must have kicked against his self. And Abraham just obeyed God. He went out and took the step of faith that we saw last Wednesday. Even though he, did, he had no clarity, no, he could not tell anybody, okay, forward in address. When you get letters, let me to this address. He had, no, he had no clue where he was going to. But the Bible says that he wondered, but he had, he had by faith that he was going to get to the promised land. Of Sarah, she was long past the age of childbearing, that, but she received the word that she was going to conceive. They took God at his word, and this was noted for faith. For Sarah, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, the Bible says that she considered him faithful who had promised and she received that promise, the promised child. Praise the Lord. Amen. I hope our own Sarah will operate in the same realm and level of faith like Mama Sarah. Though true faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive and was delivered of a child when she was passing because she judged him faithful who had promised. Faithful is he who promised who also will do it. Faithful is he who has promised. Faithful is he who has promised who also will do it. I prophesy to somebody whose faith is shaking or has shaken or where hope seemed to be lost and you're just about giving up to say that this may not happen again. May your faith be inoculated. May you receive a faith booster by this word. May God speak to you and assure you that heaven and earth may go, may pass away, but not a title of his word will go unfilled. May there be an assurance the evidential performance of those things that God has said, and may they come to pass in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. It's never too late. Never ever say it's too late. Never ever think that it's too late. God is never late. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Joy cometh in the morning. And in there, oh, the fault, for I am coming. Jesus, sit now still. Wave the answer back to everyone. By my faith or strength, we would hang on there. Please, I don't know. I know it's not easy. This thing we are saying, I know it's not even me. I told you last message that I'm preaching this sermon to myself. I know it's not easy. But rather than give up on God, rather than pack up, rather than go back, to Egypt. They, they, we are closer to the promised land than where we came from. Hello? We 
we are closer to the promised land. Where we are now, the place we are, we are closer to the promised land. Don't turn back. We're not turn back. We're not of them that drop back onto petition. You have hung in there. You have held on for so long. You have, you have, for so many years believed God. You have walked in faith. It is not now that you lower the standard. It is not now that you go back and to your home. This is not now. It is not now. Like Sarah, she judged him faithful who had promised. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we should take. So why should we take God for his word? From scripture, we know that God's word is sacrosanct, immutable, and cannot change. Matthew 24, 35, which is that place we quoted. That Matthew 24 and verse 25. I beg your pardon. Heaven and earth may pass away, but my words shall not pass away. The word of God will never go unfulfilled, will never go unachieved, will never go unaccomplished. First Peter 125. First Peter 125. But the word of God endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached to you. This is the word that we are speaking right now. This word of God that abided forever is what we are talking about. Is what we are reading and we are talking about. Praise the Lord. It is, it is lively enough for us to trust his word and confidently take it seriously. It is only then that it will produce the result that we desire. Praise the Lord. So, the first thing, faith is Believing in the efficacy and the potency of God's word. So, when you just take the word of God for what it is, faith is releasing you. Secondly, faith is taking God at His word, especially the spoken word. What has God said to you? Don't be late. Finally, well, for today, faith is taking action based on the word of God. And like we did, uh, look at last Wednesday, we just took a few more, a few more examples that support the need to take action. James 1.22, be ye doers of the road and not hearers alone. So when we went to demonstrate that we have faith, to prove that we have faith, to show that faith, to put that faith to test, so to speak, is the action we take. Faith is not denial of a situation or problem or acting foolishly or taking unnecessary risk of mental agreement, but it is trusting the word of God and God that God is enough to take action standing on that word of God. Let me let, let me break it down. Faith is not denial of a situation or a problem. And it's not acting foolishly. So for example, um Pastor Bumi Apata, never that man I've never forget. He says that if you've not had faith for headache and you have headache and you know you believe God is like is don't start by trying to have and um, trying to have faith for cancer. But pastor is the same faith, faith is faith. I agree with you. But if you not believe God that headache will go, please go and use Panadol. And there's no problem using Panadol. But those say that have faith. Exactly. Because you are believing that some you don't know what they compounded together and you used it. If you have not exercised faith for headache to go, don't now start exercising faith for cancer. We stop the things that you go to the hospital and let them do all the whatever, whatever. That's what I said that faith is not denial of situation and it's not acting foolishly. Because I don't know how many of you have had this gist from Baba. I'm sure my wife should have. And maybe that one of his. Um, I don't know whether it's a relative and so that was sick. The man was sick to the point that he was now in my sheet and I was shaking. He said, I'm, I'm having faith. I'm just I will not to I will not go to hospital. Papa said he got there. I saw the man I was this guy, we are going to die here. This is okay. That he bundled him. How many of you remember that kiss? <laughs> bundled him. He said, hey, hey, Coca, you have those for my face. Coca, he said, let the sin be of me. Let the sin be of me. No, Coca, you are spoiling my face. Coca, he bundled him. Coca landed him in the hospital. And they treated him for 
the man died. And you know what happened when you died? So you are tossing, face, 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 like that guy, machinating, sickness is killing you. So that I'm not going to be this girl. That's foolishness. That's folly. That's not faith. That's folly. So, faith is not denied. If you have to use drugs, they are sick and you have to use it. Please, by all means. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process. It's like a journey. After a while, your faith level gets to the point that you can stretch and believe that I may not need to use drugs anymore. Those who use drugs, it's not as if they don't have faith. And it's not as if they are less human beings. Or, they are exercising faith for a particular breakthrough. And then opportunity comes for you to take that opportunity and say, no, no, no. God is not telling me that this is going to come. I'm, still, I'm having faith that this is going to come. God is not going to, God said he will not use man. He's going to show up by himself. That's not faith. That's holy. Because maybe apart from the time of man that came down, God will always use instrumentality of man means. So faith is not denying this vision or taking unnecessary risk or mental element, but it is Stand on the word of God. And like Baba would always say, when you say, I have faith, what is the scripture you are standing on? What is that? You see, you get to the point, and I think we said it last, was it last minute? I can't remember. That you will have chewed the word. You will have received the word. That word, the realm of that word will have entered you and taken you over. Me, I've told you guys over and over again. One remark that has entered me that I, if you wake up many times, I can never exam. When exams are concerned, forget it. It's except I don't want to do it. Exam, even first attempt, I don't make it. Attempt, I will not give up on it. Except I'm not interested. There's no exam that I will give my heart to do that I will not make it. Because I am, I am where the academic exam is concerned, I have enough rema for academic success. So, yeah, CFA, they call on CFA. I don't know that I'm not interested. That, but if I, if I see that as a I need to do it, I put my mind to it. The last qualification I did, I, I, I tell you guys, I traveled, I went to Ghana. I came back, I traveled, I came, came back on, on Saturday or so, I don't, I Saturday, Saturday. Monday was the exam, I went to write the exam. You know, it's a, a multiple choice, this is so, as we are doing it, it made me finish. Yes. You see your results. <laughs> I'm not trying to boast, but I'm just trying to say that, so there are certain things that when, when you have received the realm of that, it enters you. You kind of like become a bit arrogant because you know in that area, uh, you can't, the devil can't try me. You see, the devil will not be trying me on day one. Try me somewhere else, or not on this one. So if you are saying that you, are fit, 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 you get to that point, so if you if have not digested the word and scattered the word that in that realm, when Somebody of uh, maybe a, a more mature person, whatever, shares wisdom with you. That means that wisdom is profitable to direct. Please. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Ah, God told me that I'm going to get a job that is one million per month, a paying job one million per month. Thank God for your life. But you are not anchoring that on anything. You have been unemployed for the past six months. And somebody comes and says, that There's this job that pays a hundred thousand. No, 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 man of God, please don't insult me. Please, I'm sorry, but I feel that you are trying to you are trying to say God is a liar. I have God. If I just confirm my dream again that my first job is a million naira per month, I'm not going to tell him to answer for hundred thousand naira job. Please, man of God, respect yourself. That would kill you. <laughs> because, yes, the work will another job, but please, you have bills to pay. You have bills to pick up. Search for that 100,000 naira, and still, while you are hanging on there, facing that one day will come. But to do nothing is fully. Because when they went that one million naira job will come, who is going to feed you? Who is going to clothe you? It's going to give you tea fair. So don't act. When you are acting faith, don't act in folly. That's what we're talking about here. Praise the Lord. But does it mean that God did not tell you the one million dollar job will come? Yeah, I told you. But God also did not tell you that. Uh, what's that 
I don't know how many of us have seen that gist where um, one guy was he was falling down the hill and so he was shouting, God save me, God save me, God save me. Then one guy was passing by with a rope. Say no, God cannot come this rope. Come come get away here. You know, what's this kind of rope? Another guy was coming with I can't remember what it was until he fell down and he died. He got to him. And he challenged me. I said, God, and you disappointed me. I said you come and save me. Say, but I came now. Where did you come? The guy that came with rope God, he said, oh, I didn't expect that you come with rope. I said, expecting God to come in a grand deal way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's holy. Praise the Lord. Because what you wanted was salvation to be saved. And somebody was opening your roof. You were expecting that. God would just, just do anything. Let's move on because of time. So, it, it is what has come to be known as sorry. So, trusting God and God in a, 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 a law. To take action, stand on this wall. That is what has come to be known as taking the step of faith. Take action. Faith is not just mental agreement with the world, but practicalizing it. So let's look at a few examples. Like we, we looked at some last Wednesday. Two men with the issue of, of blood. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Mark 5, 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse when she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his cloth, I shall be whole. So she said, I have faith, I have convinced that if I can touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I will be made whole. I have Rema, I believe, I am so convinced that if I, this is my uh, uh, issue of blood, if I can just touch Jesus, if I can just touch the end of his garment, I will be made whole. I believe, two hours after, I believe, four hours after, if I can just touch the end of Jesus' garment, and Jesus was what? Passing by. I believe, I just know. So, when she get well, she sat on her chair, believing that. The, the solution to my problem is touching the end of Jesus' garment, but the woman did not get off from her chair. Mm. 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 You would believe, 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 and she will not get well. But she believed, and she did what? Took action. When she, when she heard of Jesus coming in place, when she had, sorry, that's what I'm when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and did what did the touching that's action for she's and straightway the fountain the and straightway the fountain of her womb of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague and immediately Jesus knowing himself that virtue had gone out of him turned about the press who has touched me maybe we should read give us simpler uh, English maybe KJ uh, NIV or something because when you consume it she came behind the press. She maneuvered, maneuvered, because remember that they had all the body that surrounded Jesus, all the 12 disciples, all the, all the VIPs, all the, the, the movers and shakers of society. Jesus was there. She said, if I can touch the end of his garment. You, you see the people, no, no, this verse at all, verse, where did we say, verse 29, you give me any question. Verse 27. Verse 27. Verse When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothes. So she took action, which was not an easy one. Because there were so many people. And remember that because of this show of blood, she probably was thinking, she probably was probably looking dirty, haggard, and all that. And she probably had lost self esteem. And I'm almost certain she was not going out in public. But this one, she understood that this is an hour of deliverance. I will down the consequences. I will overlook the shame and the ridicule. In fact, they might have touched that yeah. But when I get my healing, it's okay. So that's, she took action with all those things. Praise the Lord. So that woman got her healing because not only did she believe that she would be healed, 
But she acted on her belief and her faith was solidified. Praise the Lord. We uh, second one we talked about we talked about uh, about the last Wednesday, that's Abraham and Genesis 22, you know, was anxious of a son and God promised him the son. He believed God's promise, God gave him the son, and you know, God now demanded of that same son from him, and the rest they say is history. So let's look at the third one. We have Joshua chapter 2. I, I took them to read this, you know, throughout, and I found that very interesting. Let's see whether we can read a few. If you because of time. Well, I think there's time. We've not I can't remember a Bible study that will read the whole chapter. Maybe next month we'll do Bible reading. Because you know in church, eh, once it's something more than ten verses just say it's because of just asking it. It's good to read Bible. Eh? I say let's read the whole chapter two now. Oh, oh, oh. Verse 1, don't want to skip. <laughs> and Joshua, the son of Nun, if there's anybody I know that reads that book, is my wife. A woman, she's. She's. Uh, she's. In fact, she was complaining to me yesterday that the app, they upgraded, that she may join the reading anymore. I was just looking at that. that. <laughs> at the old app, at the new app. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I will not come. I will not come to change it. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Tell me, Charlie. Oh, as you do, as you one. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out, set out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came to a house house named Rehab and lodged there. The king of Jer Jer Jericho said, Behold, there came men that come to thee, which are entered into this house, for they for they came to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said, Thus, there came men unto me, but I wish not with where they went the way. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that that the men went out. Whither the men went, I was I what not. Pursue after them quickly, for he shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax which she had laid in order upon the roof. And when the men pursued after them the way of Jordan unto the falls, and as soon as they were, at, at, which pursued after them had gone out, she shot, they shot the gate. And, be, and before they were laid down, she came up unto them onto the roof. And she said unto them, Men, listen, this is where I'm going to. And she said unto them, I know that the Lord has given you the land. And that your terror is falling upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land fail because of you. For we have had how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto the kings, the two kings of Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom he utterly destroyed. And as soon as we have had these things, our hearts did not, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven, above and in earth beneath. Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you also will show kindness unto, unto my father's house and give me a true token. And on and on and on. If you don't know the story, please go and read the story. Now Rahab took action. She had faith that clearly there we go, we are gonna, we are gonna fall. But that God would, you know, deliver Jericho into the hands of the Israelites. But she then said something that, please, spare me. And they made a promise to her that, you know, when, um, what do you call it, when they, whatever will happen, they will spare. But they now said to her that this scarlet with which you let us down, when, when we are going to come, make sure that you have it hanging on your on your windows, and when we see it, we'll, we'll deliver you. Actually, took action. But let me see whether we can reach all the way down. <coughs> Where is it happening? And, Pastor Tim, and, and she said, according to the words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed, and, and she bound the, and she bound the scarlet line 
in the window, and they went down and came onto the mountain and abode there three days until the Boshuas were gone and all of that and all of that. I think some other chapters further was when that the you know, the fall of uh, Jericho, yeah, um, chapter six. Verse 25. And Joshua saved Rahab the Lord alive, and um, and her father's house, and all that, she, all, all that she had. And she dwelt in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jer Jer um, Jericho. Praise the Lord. So she took she took action. She believed that is the is that Jericho was going to fall, but there was need for her to save herself and to save her household. And she did exactly what you know she was told to do, and that brought deliverance to her. But there's something else in that story that I found quite. Let's go back there. It's a bit of a digression. You know, but she said something to them. As soon as we heard verse eleven, chapter two, verse eleven. As soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more point in any man because of you. For the Lord your God he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. He took unbeliever to remind the believer that the God they serve is bigger than. May unbeliever not be the one to tell you how big your God is. Yeah. You, you believer, you don't know how big your God is. It's the unbeliever that tells you oh, this your God is very, very big. I found that quite interesting that the unbelieving Rahab, our Lord, was the one that was telling them that we had this your God, our heart has as as filled us. That this your God is God indeed. They always say that some of us we don't know what we have until we lose it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's look at a few more um action. Lydia in Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Verse 14 and 15. Acts 16, 14. Acts 16, 14. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Tyre, which worship God, had us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized, and her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come unto my house and abide there. And she, she constrained her. The emphasis is that, that God opened her heart, and she had Tended unto the things which were spoken unto her. She responded in faith to the words of Paul and she got saved. Praise the Lord. Amen. The jailer in Acts chapter 16, that's in Acts chapter 16, move down to chapter to verse 30. Acts 16, 30. And okay, verse 29. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sash. What must, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy household. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their steps, and was baptized, he and, his, he and all of his, straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he sent me before them, rejoice, believing in God with all his house. So he responded to the word of salvation, by accepting and of course going for baptism. Praise the Lord. So we need to respond in faith. Do you trust God for anything? Locate the relevant word of God concerning that situation and take action. It is fruitless to say that we have faith if we don't act out our faith. Faith without works is dead. James chapter 2 and verse 26. Faith without works is dead. Act on the world. Believe God. Dominate on the world. Act on it and your faith never will grow. So as we draw uh, you know, according to this today's series, just a quick recap. Number one, faith is believing in the efficacy and the potency of God's word. Two, faith is taking God at His word. And we sang that song, remember? It is so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise and to know, thus says the Lord. What? Is the trust in the Lord in your life? Just take it and run with it. Thirdly, faith is taking action based on that word that you have received.
de los pueblos. Te so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise and to know to say so long Jesus, Jesus how I trust him how I prove to him for and Jesus, Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him more Jesus, Jesus how Father, I long for more grace to trust you more. To take your word for just on the face value, just to take your word as it is your word. To take your word. In first Thessalonians chapter 2, that it says that the Thessalonians received the word for what it is, the word of God, and they ran with it and it profited them. Lord, help me to take your word Don't, without questioning, without reasoning, without rationalizing without explanation trust the word of God and take it once the word of God I know the word of God I receive it and I, I, and I imbibe it that's all that's all I need that's all I need help me go to take your word for this so I faith my faith level can be can rise I can be inoculated I, I can I can receive a, a push of faith The more faith we have, the more, the more we are able to dispel doubt and fear and worry and anxiety. Lord, let my faith level increase so that my fear level, my death level will reduce. Lord, inoculate my faith. Let my faith be boosted so that fear, anxiety, worry and doubt will go. There's this song that's coming to me, but I don't know how to opposed to it. Salvation, I know from his word 
Too much tribulation must follow their Lord. I know from his word that too much tribulation must follow their Lord. Since all that I meet shall work for my good, the bitter is sweet, the message the food. Though painful are present, will cease from long, and then, O oh pleasant, the conqueror's song. Since he is my God, this my to obey, this is to provide. To talk me my way, since it is to God, this my to obey, this is to provide. To sin is be broken, to sin is be broken, of which God, of which all shall fail. The word he has spoken surely shall prevail. The word he has spoken surely shall prevail. Father, in the name of Jesus, every word that you have spoken concerning us, let it prevail, O God. The word of fruitfulness, the word of marriage, the word of increase, the word of job, the word of business, the word of business expansion, the word of promotion, the word of, uh, of academic excellence, the word of peace, the word of healing in our bodies, whatever that word you have spoken to God, it shall surely prevail. In the name of Jesus, Amen. let this word have put away exercise faith. We, we have faith. Be gone, unbelief. Let every doubt and unbelief be gone. For my Savior is dying. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Let's stand up as we ready for the communion. I Christine Trash it. Now I'm not saying that 
you should not process it. But don't let it take away your faith. Don't let that negative report take away your faith. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't make it in life.
this we ask, O Lord, that you bless him, that you replenish him, cause him, O Lord, to have his own testimony of this work of faith in the mighty name of Jesus. And the that which you have received tonight, O Lord, Father, we will run with it, we will apply it, and we will testify in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me give you praise for you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Let's package our offering. Let's package what the offering to our Father, our provider, our supplier.
Hallelujah. Venue, don't worry, I'll tell you the venue. Venue is there. Venue is there. And it's physical. The venue is there and it's physical. Number 42. Um, Kate Obaye Moshini. Obaye Kini Obaye Moshini. Kate. Hey, Leki, it's live. So please join us next Sunday or this Sunday that we'll be coming into for the youth takeover service because our youth arm of the church, they are called the Maid Nation making a difference eternally. So please join, pray along, come expectant, come expectant, come with that bucket full of faith, with an expectation, and I can assure you that the word of God that you're going to receive is definitely going to have expression in you and you testify in the mighty name of Jesus. The time is 9 a.m. Our service shall be at 9 a.m. But before we start then, we're going to have our prayer revolution at 7.30 and we we'll pray our way into the service. And um, I know that God that will come here to meet will surely do us good in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, for this month of October, on Friday the 27th, that's the last Friday of the month, we set to new Lord powering the vigil for this month. Um, it's going to be a vigil, but I was just I was trying to um, arrange it because from the vigil on Friday. And then the prophetic encounter meeting, the thing you know, you know, is going to be taking place on Sunday. So we flow from the vigil. The vigil is starting at 9, a, uh, 9 p.m., I beg your pardon. And the venue is at our headquarters, the 42 Association Avenue by Manikoro Post of Lutoju. For Sunday, from that vigil, we flow into Sunday, where the certain new Lord will be taking place. And it's going to be a prophetic encounter meeting. So please make sure your heart is prepared. The thing will not be enough. And powered by our Father and the Lord, Reverend, and for that is Samuel Oka. So please make sure you come expectant. Don't just come alone. Invite somebody. And if by chance you are not able to join us, please make sure you log in. And join us online because we'll be live. And God will surely bless you and set to you. And you will have an encounter in the mighty name of Jesus. You will testify in the mighty name of Jesus. So for the month of October, Take over service and then our father's um, prophetic outreach taking place Friday for the vigil and Sunday for the outreach. So please join us in God will bless you. Even as you put these things to heart, as you join us and you surely come and testify in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Any other announcements will pass across to us. If you see anyone who should be the first time to arrive, you to tell yourself and welcome. Yeah. Yeah. welcome. So next time, make sure we are telling somebody beside us that you're welcome. God bless you. For those online, God bless you. You are welcome. Praise the Lord. There's an important announcement which has not been made. And that's the, uh, there's a special program. Um, the family and friends of uh, Unilorin um, Fellowship. It's a um, song association that our father the Lord belongs to. They're having a program. This Saturday and Sunday. Um, Saturday, having a medical outreach. I think it starts from 10 o'clock. Can you please protect one time? So it's at 9 a.m. the medical outreach. And on Sunday, the other test given at 12 noon. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's something that Father the Lord is part of. In fact, he's going to be a speaker in the, the Sunday event. And we are hosting, it's taking place in headquarters. So I want to encourage, strongly encourage us. I know that um, it's just of us on this side of the divide. Might be a lot of uh, computing, so if you can't come on Saturday, please try to be there on Sunday. Um, so the service on Sunday here, we have to do everything in righteousness to make sure it ends by 11 so that we have an hour to commute to uh, HQ for this program. Please keep it at heart, and God will help us uh, in Jesus' name. As we honor our Father, I'm sure that God will honor us as well. All right, let's just go on our feet as we. Uh, so, for those, uh, Kish, please get a list of the winners of from um, Mr. Beato. We're going to get stuff for them downstairs. <laughs> Yes, 
established in our praising. I shall be good with the clear your mind.